Samstagabend. Was könnte Schöneres geben?
kann man sogar, weiß ich gar nicht, meinst du, du stehst, stehst eher rechts auch, oder? Und man könnte den noch so ein bisschen, ein bisschen drehen. Weil da muss man sich nicht immer auf die Kurve drücken. Ich das Ach so, ja. Demonstrieren. Okay, Entschuldigung, also es ist jetzt genau. Nein, das ist ja noch nicht. Ach, der hat nämlich meine deutsche Uhr wieder angefangen, bevor wir dann nicht ganz spät kommen. Oh, wir müssen gucken. Ich mache ja immer Fotos mit Kollegen und hintere sie. Ich habe gar nicht also, wer der Foto macht, was wir da sind, wir stehen überhaupt nicht auf. for professional publishing and uh, well, a case study, how it is working in real life and how can it help you in your projects. So first I would like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Julia and I'm community manager at um, Hubert Burda Media, which is one of the biggest uh, publishers in Germany and Europe. So I'm presenting Thunder today. Would you like to say now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm uh, Alexander. <laughs> and I'm, uh, yeah, we're honored to present a case we uh, actually did with uh, Sander. I'm uh, head of the Berlin office for Invica, but I'll tell a few words later. Okay. Um, some years ago, we at Hubert Boda Media faced some challenges when it came to um, content management systems. And today I would like to show you our approach um, with Drupal and the distribution Sander on how to solve these challenges. Oh, this story. Um, at Hubert Boda Media, there are more than 500 websites worldwide. And they used to run on more than 100 different content management systems. So that wasn't very effective, as you can truly imagine. Um, especially, as in today's digital world, we are faced with new challenges constantly. Martin Sorel, he put it like this. 
technology will never again change as slowly as it does today. So change is accelerating and we need to adapt faster and faster. That's why we have decided to use one content management system for all our border brands. So we started with uh, Drupal and developed Thunder. As a base, we used Drupal 8, since it fitted our needs almost perfectly. You probably know all of uh, these points, but anyway, these were our reasons why we chose Drupal 8. It's free and open source, it's fully responsive front and back end, it's built with PHP and it integrates Symfony 2. It is widely used and highly appreciated among uh, developers as you. And it is easily adaptable with thousands of modules provided by a global community. So we used Drupal 8 and added some publisher specific modules and configurations. And this is Thunder. Then in 2015, we started the first project, which was Playboy.de. The brand uh, adapted the Thunder Core for their website, and they contributed some modules um, to the core, which grew as a result of this. The same happened when InStyle and any other broader website we launched since then. So the Thunder Core improved and improved and grew better. So let's have a look at the differences between Drupal and Thunder, and at the relationship of the two of them. So Drupal is a general purpose CMS, and Thunder is a distribution for professional publishing. Keep in mind that the distribution is no fork. We want to stay very, very close to the Drupal core, and we want to use the enhancement from the global Drupal community and give something back to the community. So that's the code and documentation exchange you see here. So just a quick view up. Um, Drupal is open source under the GNU uh, General Public License. It's for large volume websites. It's um, supported by a community. And um, with the current version 8, um, new, completely new system design and features were introduced. So we took this as a base and selected, adapted, configured, and tested the modules we need and included them into the Thunder distribution. This as well is. Uh, license under the GNU general um, public license, and it includes the Drupal 8 basis, and we add modules that are require, required for professional publishing, but are missing in the Drupal community. Those modules we will uh, we make uh, available to the Drupal community, and also bug fixes and things like that. Everything we, everything we find, we give back. So we find a bug, uh, we will fix it, and we will fix it in the Drupal module and not only in Thunder. That's the idea. So it's like a perfect world, and everyone benefits from our work. <laughs> By now, there are more than 20 border sites running on Thunder, not only in Germany, but also in the Czech Republic, in the Ukraine, and in India. And also, non border websites are running on Thunder. Looking at the border website, the Thunder sites generate more than 70 million visits and approximately 250 million page impressions per month. So, for Borda, Thunder is a perfect solution. Now, let's have a look at our brands again. There are a lot of different business models. You have Playboy with paid content, um, the cooking recipe with a huge community, uh, My Beautiful Garden, which um, is earning money by e-commerce, by selling stuff for gardeners. Um, Bonte.de is about um, from celebrities and video content. InStyle is about fashion and selling products to people with affiliate links, um, and so on. So we realized that Borda is a smaller representation of the whole publishing cosmos. So in the end, hopefully, Thunder would be a perfect system for everybody. Plus, we are convinced that what matters today is not so much the technology, but the content. So we decided that uh, we could give away Thunder as an open source product. Now keep in mind with the internet, everybody can become a publisher. But it differentiates some guy on YouTube 
and a big publishing house like Boda is not the technology, but the brand, the minds of journalists, the content we deliver, and the connections between uh, our journalists and the readers. And um, so technology is not differentiating us. So in our opinion, there's nothing to lose if we share our uh, technology. Nothing to lose, but a lot to win. So Thunder is uh, unlimited and free under the true general public license, as I said before. Um, we think that the community will enhance the system and therefore everybody benefits by improved speed and reduced cost. Boda as well, of course, but everyone else too. There are no obligations. Every publisher can decide what parts of the development they want to share, none, all, or some. There are, of course, no logos, no ads. Boda will collect no data. That's important to highlight when you talk to other publishers. Actually, there's no need to even tell anybody that you use Thunder. So there's with open source. Um, nevertheless, we hope for a growing community. We want to introduce a culture of sharing and cooperation in the publishing world. Our intention is to foster uh, cooperation among the industry so that we all are able to concentrate on what really matters, the content. So we funded, we founded the Thunder Coalition, a community of publishers, which is not only publishing houses, but actually everybody who's into professional publishing. Uh, developers and agencies, the certified Thunder integrators, such as Invika. The coalition members develop valuable modules for their <coughs> own purpose and share them with the community. They also share experiences and best practices. For example, at regular community meetings like our Thunder Day we introduced last year. Together, we want to build the world's best possible CMS for publishing. Now I hand over to uh, Alex. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, <clears throat> the world's best CMS. Uh, this is a good, uh, good point. And I'm uh, very happy to be a Sunder uh, certified integrator on the one hand and also to be able to, to speak here. But to be honest, uh, in the first step, I need to kind of yeah, take you a little while back in the uh, history probably of, of publishing. Um, on the one hand, because I can, because I have this image, and on the <laughs> other hand, because it's maybe useful to, to understand from where we're coming. I mean, this is actually the uh, grandfather of uh, our CEO from uh, year year. Uh, on a Heidelberg uh, printing machine, which is also funny because uh, we also work for Heidelberg printing machines. So kind of the circle is complete if you want so. But this is how you would produce books probably in the, I don't know, when this was taken, 30s, 40s, I don't know, quite a while ago. And yeah, publishing changed in a way, technological wise. I mean, this is how a Heidelberg printing machine could look today. It's fancy German engineering stuff for printing things, hoping that someone will read them, buy them, actually, hopefully, in the first place. And um, yeah, I mean, Heidelberg realized, ooh, this printing thing is kind of under pressure, in a way, at least um, in, in some fields, and also are, of course, um, publishers rethinking their, their strategy and, and making up uh, their minds. Because what's also important to know is that in a yeah, world that was existing yeah, maybe a few years ago or even now with some uh, publishing houses, I mean, the main target group was in a way the bookshop. So the books were made to sell them to bookshops because the publishers were not selling to, to readers because the readers were buying from retailers, AKA bookshops. Now maybe Amazon, but the main distribution channel still is retail. So nearly nobody goes to a publisher and, and purchases a book directly or does anything uh, similar. And I mean, this model, yeah, sounds crazy in a way, if you just think about it, because all other industries are in a, in a deep change and all kind of producers try to sell their goods directly, right? But why not the publishers? And um, I had the chance to, to meet the guy on the left, um, Andy Lentle, heading uh, the um, digital kind of yeah, uh, team, if you want, so from uh, German publisher Drömer Knau, part of the Holzbring Group, so a quite big uh, book publishing uh, company. And he had an idea, and I mean, the image was 
taken by by a lucky accident if you want so so he was not actually in this moment explaining the idea probably but uh, I, I, I think it's just the right image to show his um, kind of mindset and his uh, enthusiasm also to to change the way like uh, companies like Drummer now were selling in the yeah if you want so old days because he said okay I mean, going there and just selling the book to the retailer, and the retailer, mm -hmm -hmm, so we need to convince the retailer to put our book, you know, at a prominent position in everything, and ah, this is not working out. So we want to address the readers directly, and also they, they got under big pressure from uh, authors saying, hey, I want better presence, I just uh, need something to, to happen on your website, etc. So he said, okay. We have to find a way, and he was um, kind of focusing very much on, on um, women, and said, "Okay, I have quite a lot of content in my my uh, company to address such target group, and a focused target group is always helping, probably. I mean, this is stock photos, of course. But um, he said, okay, I have a lot of content, you know, about food and yoga and whatever relaxation, how to get your life organized." Etc. So I mean, if you would visit a bookshop uh, nowadays, you can see literally hundreds or thousands of books addressing those topics. But just books, I mean. And he said, well, maybe not all of the uh, women would really like to buy a whole book if they just want to know how to do whatever three healthy uh, recipes or, or, or uh, new yoga stuff or whatever. So he said, okay, we need to, to find a way to, to address them. And he said, well, I came across this thing called Thunder. This might be interesting. What do you think? I was, yes, could be an option. And he said, yes, and then I heard about this MVP thing, and I'm not quite sure how familiar everybody is with the term, just a very short explanation, basically meaning that you build something in the yeah, it's minimum viable product, so you would define a product as small as you can to go out and live and test and see how it goes. And I was, yes, this is how we work, pretty fair. And he said, yeah, well, to make things more interesting, I have a hard deadline. So there's no discussion about this, because if the Frankfurt Book Fair is one of the biggest book fairs probably in the world, is happening, they won't wait for us. If we one hour, uh, one week late, then, then it's not there. Okay, now we're talking. And he said, yeah, this is the timetable. And so if you, uh, as you can see, <clears throat> we started talking in kind of spring, but things took some time, legal stuff, blah, blah, blah. So actually the work really started in, in, in July and we had to be ready by end of September. So yeah, I mean, there's no much, not much time to, to discuss endlessly things. And I mean, there was basically nothing yet there. So it was totally clear that this couldn't be the approach. So there was no time to you know, build a real plane and, and, and uh, get it going. I mean, this is what we try normally in, in Germany and fail very hard, as in Berlin with our airport. Never gonna open because we're trying to build this and obviously are not able to. Um, and a true MVP could maybe look like this. So if the definition would be needs to fly, but somehow, yeah, the question is, is this really great enough or, or wouldn't it be nice if, if people could actually sit inside of this plane. So we said, okay, then we need a kind of MLP, which is actually the minimum lovable product. So you take the MVP approach and add some more nice ingredients so that it grows and then comes the hard part. You need to define that it's not growing too much, but to an extent where you would say, okay, nice. And um, yeah, it was totally clear Sanda is our only chance to be able to, to deliver in, in such time frame. Because you have to remember there was nothing there, so we really had to start from the very beginning. So there was not even a logo or whatever. So we were really starting at an early point, and it was totally clear it's not only about the technology, but it's about how we would work together. So there was no chance to kind of take a list of requirements, go there, sit down, build something and then a month later go back and <coughs> present and, and then whatever, get the, the uh, feedback that it's maybe not the right thing you build. So it was totally clear that both teams, our team, their team, need, need to be totally integrated. So um, yeah, we worked 
as close as you can get uh, together to get this delivered in time and this was working uh, perfectly. So PO from the client, Andy as a PS, designer, everybody just, just worked together in a, in a very nice manner. And yeah, we kind of followed our, let's say, classical approach, but in a very um, short time frame. So, so this is how we yeah, do all of our projects. We could say um, we adjusted it in the Arsenal talk. So we would build something, we would measure how it works, then yeah, see what's, what's there to learn, and then do <coughs> it. And this is a constant uh, circle, of course. And yeah, then, then we finally came up with something, and I'm here to present a case study, so I need probably not to show uh, only things about book publishing, but also what we have uh, built and accomplished in this time frame. So everything you can see here, because I think uh, most of the uh, screenshots were really taken very shortly after going live, so there was not yeah, any, any stuff we kind of put on in the last weeks, and now I'm showing you something totally different from what went live, actually. So, um, yeah, we have some different sections. We, we um, have events, because it's like in the music industry, obviously, so one idea to earn money is not only sell the content, but also kind of uh, take people to, to uh, go to events, spend money there, buy tickets, buy merch, whatever. So I, I think it's interesting to see how the industries are kind of growing together and some ideas that went well or worked well maybe in one industry also tend to be used in, in, in other industries. So this is uh, somehow interesting. We have articles, of course. This is one of the um, yeah, key elements of the uh, website, if you want so. So there are different, um, different areas, different fields like yeah, what is it, uh, food, it's work-life balance, it's um, meditation, and yeah, within those um, yeah, kind of um, sections we have, have different articles, of course. And also what I mentioned uh, earlier, and a very important uh, yeah, point at this project are really the authors, because basically, I mean, yeah, we're doing this to a big part for them, because they want to be present, they want to be seen, they want uh, that, that people recognize them, and yeah, I mean, selling books or later maybe subscriptions or whatever we uh, are going to do on this, this website is all also uh, based on, on uh, their yeah, kind of status and their, their followers on Facebook, etc. So we very heavily rely on them to push the project, which is also a little bit crazy in a way if you think of the old times, but yeah, this is how it is. And what we did actually, this is just a very rough um, idea to show how it's, it's really looking in the back end and what Sunder brings because the core message here is, is maybe that, I mean, sure, we did some modifications in the back end, but very slightly. I mean, the main focus of this project really was the front end because we had to build all these different views blah, 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 this was, was really consuming some time. But the back end, we really yeah, needed to, to not modify uh, much there, because basically Sander brings like nearly everything out of the box we needed at least for this project. So what you can simply see is we have some channels to differentiate, we, we um, use a teaser area and, and where we heavily use the paragraphs module that is um, integrated in Sander and very nicely pre-configured, so I mean, Sure, our developers always say, and we had this discussion also sometimes, that, yeah, but I could build this on my own. And I'm, yeah, you could. I mean, the module is there, you could install it, and could go there and do the configuration, but you would need to. And if there's no time, then, I mean, we should use something that already brings everything uh, we needed. And this is uh, really, really good and, and, and helpful. And, yeah, we have lots of media content, of course, books and videos and images and everything. So also media, um, organizing the media files is also very nice with, with Drupal Sunder. And uh, I just, um, this was done today actually, mm -hmm. but I just went to the backend again and, and said, okay, if somebody asks, what, what uh, have you done there um, in, in, uh, related to programming, I, I could at least show this. Um, and it's showing that, I mean, the only real stuff, and this was, consuming quite some time was the exact target integration because this was mentioned at the very beginning and we were also thinking about it but we said yeah there's a Drupal 7 module so Salesforce, uh, 
exact target shouldn't be an issue, but I mean, I don't know whether you ever touched exact target, but obviously it could be an issue. So this took us, uh, I mean, really uh, some time. Everything was there, and uh, exact target was still not responding in a, in a nice way. But uh, we, we figured this out as well. But as you can see, nearly everything was there out of the box. I mean, surely we modified little things here and there and, and did lots of configuration on top, but um, the real development part was, was rather small, very nice. And so what, what did we learn from this project? And this is also important always. I mean, we're doing retrospectives and see how we can improve what went good, what went um, wrong maybe, or, or needs to be improved. And I mean, Sander was helping, so everybody clearly agreed on, on this yeah, core message. And um, working together with the customer also helps, of course. I mean, this was not a new learning in this uh, case, but it was ag agreed on again. And yeah, we, we uh, saw that we started with our development a little bit too early because we, we saw that, yeah, some things, some configurations could be done at, at the very beginning, but in the design process, things got changed and changed. And this is, I mean, working on an agile project, this is how it happens. I mean, this is not untypical, but given the deadline, it was sometimes, the team was, yeah, busy, let's put it in this words, and they said, okay, maybe next project we should at least wait maybe for one or two weeks uh, until design finalization, if you want, so it has progressed to a certain degree, and um, so it was that we had to touch things, yeah, twice, three times, four times, I don't know, because, uh, yeah, I mean, the ideas went, uh, came up and, and we, we tried to, to uh, bring everything together. But, um, yeah, it worked out. I mean, we, we um, went live, I think, three days before the Frankfurt uh, Book Fair started and went there and met a bunch of, of happy people. Everybody was like, whoa, it really happened. This never happened before at our house. And uh, the... the highest level, you know, publishing lady of Drömer Knauer wrote a handwritten letter to the project team saying, whoa, you did it, this is amazing, first project in time, in budget, a website and even uh, works on my mobile, this is crazy, and she was really excited, and this is so good to see a customer that delighted, because sometimes you do a project and the customer is like, well, okay, great, nice job, yes, cool, but this time it was really, there were, whoa, everybody was hugging us, etc. So it was really, really nice. And um, yeah, just a very short, um, short uh, part to uh, who we are as an Ica. Um, I mean, basically our big part of our business is technology oriented. Um, I mean, this is not only um, our focus, but um, yeah, we're doing quite a lot of projects, large projects, um, are way larger than this one, uh, probably, but Sander also helps to do small projects. So we're working very much with, with Sander or Drupal, depends where, what makes sense, um, but in the field of commerce, also with, with Magento or Spryker or Shopware or Commerce, everything that makes um, sense. And yeah, most time, try to, to find a system that yeah, closely matches, I would say, so that we don't have to, to I think it was uh, mentioned before, reinvent the wheel again and again. So, um, and Sander helps, of course, in this, but we also do design and uh, concept, etc. And uh, yeah, we have 12 offices, around 200 people. And of course, I mean, everybody shows probably this slide, but I have to, we're pretty happy if somebody would be uh, interested in, in joining our team and um, yeah, build also such projects where customers come and hug you later. <laughs> and if you uh, uh, don't like it, then just tell me, then I will you know, receive all the uh, compliments and hugs and, and you can just yeah, sit there and, and smile. So this would also work. And um, I think we have one slide. Maybe you can just... Um yeah, that's the first announcement of we will do another community day this year uh, in November with uh, about Thunder. We can meet the Thunder community, meet publishers, meet uh, professional companies into professional publishing and uh, IT experts. And yeah, so save the date if you're interested. <laughs> to November.
And as I said, I'm uh, kind of head of our Berlin office, so I'm very uh, happy to see that it's this is uh, taking place in Berlin. So if you're there, just um, let me, let us know. Then, um, yeah, we're also happy to arrange whatever needs to be um, arranged. And yeah, happy to have this this great day. And uh, as a participant of the last Sunday day, I mean, not that neutral maybe, <laughs> but um, I can tell you that it's really worth going there. And I think this was basically the feedback everybody gave who was um, attending. So yeah, if your calendar has some, uh, you know, blind spots or white pages, then you should definitely write down uh, the 19th and 20s. It's, I think, really a great event. Yeah, any questions? <laughs> First one uh, about the, the project, maybe a, a little bit more from, uh, asking from the technical perspective. Uh, before starting this project during the uh, research phase, mm -hmm. did you look into other distributions? I'm not saying you know, like other, other platforms, but other distributions of Thunder, but for example, like Lightning that is promoted by Avia. Uh, have you considered that? Or yeah, but to be honest, very roughly. I mean, we just made sure that there is nothing yeah, even easier or faster. And, um, you know, with the structure, basically, I mean, most part of the job is done by the uh, paragraph module. Yeah. And right out of the box with Thunder, it brings nearly all the types we are also using. So, and the stuff regarding authors and how they are related to books and blah, 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 this was not also box box anyway. So yeah, we, we took a look at other distributions, but yeah, maybe for a few hours, and then said, okay, any big benefits? No, Sander, yes, okay, go. This way. <laughs> <laughs> Very quick question also about uh, Indica, the company itself. The most of your projects and core projects and core clients. What, what is the technology around? What were most of your problems? Is it a variety that is very wide angle from from e-commerce into Ionic? No, it's not about where we want to go, basically. Because, I mean, I shortened this part a little bit, but in, in, in this project we did it very yeah, compressed, if you want so. But in the beginning we do a we call it discovery uh, workshop where we find out what's really best for, for the project, for the customer, for the business goals. We did it here, as I said, pretty, pretty um, reduced because uh, Driver Knau also did research and they had all their stakeholders ready, risk mapping, they, they nearly prepared everything we would normally gather from them already. So we could kind of shorten this a little bit, but um, the decision is not what we want. I mean, if I'm not going there. I mean, I'm a big fan of Sander because I think it helps in many I'm ways. I think like in the general, in the general, like the company, what they would like to be, for example, in five years' time, is be the focus in, in, in CMS systems or more e-commerce. I think more the combination yeah. because the projects I'm, I'm seeing at the moment and uh, that are kind of approaching us and uh, the the inquiries are tending to be combination of both. So maybe the, the MVP or MLP would be probably a Drupal project. This is not that uncommon, I would say, that you know the content part needs to be done first in a good way because many old legacy systems need to be replaced. We all know this and are happy about. And um, if there is no kind of commerce function so far, then probably you could start there and then add whatever Drupal Commerce or Spryker or, or Magento or I don't know, but it could be the other way around as well. But I see more projects and really kind of a combination of both uh, parts. So exciting. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and to be honest, I mean, if you think back uh, like uh, five years, then you would probably not imagine such an event with such talks and such projects uh, that could be delivered. So. I'm, I'm not guessing. Five years is really far away. I mean, I'm happy if I know what's happening in like six months. So. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess in any, any publishing process, you've got authors creating content and maybe a sub-editor who proofreads it and sends it back. Maybe a translator then who uh, translates it into another language. So I guess you've got a, a, a workflow in any publishing business to go from uh, the idea to something that then gets published on, on the web uh, with lots of roles and, and processes. How do you handle all that in front of 
Yeah, I mean, maybe do you want yeah. to answer from the standard perspective? I'll turn it over to Daniel, who's uh, our lead developer, with uh, about the this <laughs> content <laughs> moderation and yeah, workflow I would thing. Just say in this project, <laughs> there is not a real workflow because the authors are not, at least if not at the moment, really going there and, and editing their stuff on their own. So at the moment, there is kind of a core team really putting the content on, and and they are just uh, the editorial uh, role. So, so there is no kind of real workflow, but it could be, of course, if you want. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, the, the, the quick answer from the development <laughs> perspective is um, quite similar to that uh, because uh, none of the uh, brands in Boda have any kind of workflow. Uh, might be surprising, but none of them uh, want anything there. Uh, we did not invest much there. Uh, of course, uh, content moderation is in it and you can enable it and you can use it, uh, but we don't provide any kind of um, any kind of uh, pre-configuration for that yet. We have a pull request for that, but since we actually don't have our own use cases for it, it's hard for us to, mm -hmm. to get it right. So uh, we, we, we thought of keeping that out of it for now and let's see if there is some, maybe there comes if you enter, we have some expertise and experiences. Really can give a good uh, pre configuration, otherwise, yeah. And it really depends on the complexity, probably. I mean, an easy workflow could be yeah, configured within a few minutes, maybe yeah. even I could do it. You know, like editor is not allowed to publish, bam, and then you have your easy workflow, but to assign content to somebody and reassign and blah, blah, blah. I think there needs to be some... Uh, and it's also very, yes, yeah, it, there's no one workflow that you can uh, deliver and everybody sends it, so... Content moderation is there, you can use it, so... <laughs> yeah, it needs to be questioned heavily, because most ideas about workflows are crazy ideas, like five people who has to kind of sign something off, never gonna work, so probably asking these questions and really bringing it down to the real workflow, then helps, I mean, if it helps or works with Porter, then probably many other people are, should be fine as well. So, so there was... Oh, thanks, sorry. <laughs> I, um, I was trying to understand how this differs. It's a distribution from standard Drupal. So mm -hmm. it installs some modules, some themes. So I'm looking at, I oh, forgive my German, uh, Einfach ganz Leben. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a nice theme there, but that, is that the property of that publication? Or is that in Thunder for us to use as a theme? The front end theme was developed for this uh, publication because this is not part of the uh, Thunder distribution. So does Thunder the come with some themes? No. 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 It comes with one theme. Right. It's the Thunder theme. Yeah, it's yeah, more or less that's just a placeholder thing, but you need yeah. to build it. But this is this is not the, the real benefit, I would say, because uh, in the back end, truly, mm. I mean, it's close to what you know or you can, as I said, I mean, you could do everything as you can see there. I mean, you could develop your, you know, uh, admin theme, you can go there and configure the paragraphs module, you can install this and this and this and this, but it takes time. Uh, it's simply about time, and I mean, seeing, yeah. I, I don't know, if your three developers four. Four, four working months. for <laughs> weeks and months to build it, I mean, you feel, and if you compare it, and this is the interesting point, I mean, if you see it like this, then you probably think, yeah, okay, well, this is nice, but if you take a Drupal 8 out, out of the box, install it, and just compare, you know, the back end, then you see, whoa, okay, such a huge difference. That would be a, that would be really useful to have as a slide or something. <laughs> oh, we could add. Uh, we're actually talking about. I was actually uh, thinking about this, but I thought this would be maybe like showing you how a banana looks. Because I thought everybody knows, you know, the Drupal 8 admin theme from uh, the very heart. No, just joking. Um, but but uh, it's worse. I mean, you could just try uh, and, and take a look at a demo. Or if you're interested, I might well, <laughs> actually have the Drupal 8 on my machine. I could uh, show you afterwards. But it's really a big, big difference. But well, we focus on the back end. We focus on the configurations, on content editing, on adding right. content, on adding multimedia, and stuff like this, on the paragraphs that you can have some storytelling um, with the paragraph <laughs> on um, teaser and teaser lists and um, uh, 
things like that. That's the main focus of Panda. Um, we talk a lot about uh, theming, but I, I learned from my colleagues it's obviously pain in the ass uh, if you want to make it for all. And, um, but we just decided not to focus on this for now. Maybe we can do it later, maybe we can find some solutions, but for now we we'll say let's focus on the back end. That's something everybody can use. And theming is something really special. Everybody wants his own look and feel of the website. Everyone has his own ideas, his own wishes and preferences. Um, so it's really hard to find a, a solution which fits all or even most. So we said skip with the back end. That's where we can really help and see it. support everybody. Do you have any developer guidelines or best practices on how to start the distribution and make your own version of it? How do you work with configuration stuff? Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically uh, everything you would uh, say for Drupal 8 as well. There's no difference. All best, best, best practices for Drupal 8 are just the best practices for uh, Android as well. Yes. Okay. Good. Just, yeah, just so a different starting point, basically. Yes. Yes, yeah, mostly uh, can be different if if the distributions get updated in the future, how do you make sure that your changes are not over operating? Yeah, up, up, updates are very special, but maybe out of scope for this. <laughs> <laughs> we have an idea for this, so if you're interested, uh, we will expect it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> Sunday <laughs> helps, yeah. We're out of time, but we have an important announcement. Yes. We do. So, thank you everyone for uh, attending Drupal Camp London. Um, this is the last session of the day, but uh, we encourage you all to join us for the uh, evening social. So this is at the Blacksmith and Toffee Maker uh, pub, which is three minutes away. I'm not sure exactly where, but I think if you stick it into uh, Google Maps, you should find it. And our generous sponsors, Thunder, have put a thousand pounds on the bar tab. So get in there as soon as you can. Get three. Do you know if we can buy food over there? Uh, I, I, I would have thought so, but yeah. Right, cool. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ah, just grab it. 
Yeah. Otherwise, uh, it would be depending on one person who is talking to the other. But that's why I think it helps yeah. so many levels. Yeah. You do it on the board, you can add the Uh, 
And and this is, I mean, if we have tried to make this with WordPress, this is the whole No, I think this is on platform as well. Yeah, we do quite a lot with Acquia, but also I mean, even Einfach als Leben, which 